Hey, what's going on guys? We are back in the garage today. In today's project, we are going to be installing a clutch interlock bypass switch. Now what that's gonna allow me to do is start the car without pressing the clutch pedal. Some of you might be wondering why you would wanna do that. And the main thing is when you install an aftermarket clutch in these cars, there's some rumors on the internet. Some people have had issues with what's called crank walk. What that is, is it causes wear on the thrust bearings inside the engine. Basically, when you put a heavier clutch in there, it pulls. Well, this is your crank pulley. At the other end of the crank is your flywheel. Now what this does is when you press the clutch in an S2000, it pulls your crank that direction. And it pulls it harder than the stock clutch would because it has more clamping force. So when you first start your engine up on a cold start, there's no oil pressure in the engine. That's when you're gonna see the most amount of wear on your thrust bearings, especially if you're running an aftermarket ECU where it's gonna crank for even longer on the initial startup and your clutch is gonna be held in. So what this is gonna allow you to do is start the car without, apply without applying an axial load on your thrust washers inside your engine. All right, so we, we've decided that we want to be able to start the car without having the clutch pressed. There's a couple different ways you could do it. There's probably a dozen different ways you could do it. The most common that most guys do from what I've seen online is they literally just take the, the connector off of the clutch interlock switch and they jump it with a, they use paper clips, but you could use a piece of wire or something. And, and that is certainly one way to do it. That essentially removes it completely from the equation. You can start your car without the clutch pressed. It gets the job done. The problem with that method is you have to 100% know your car is not in gear. If your car is in gear and you hit the and you hit the start button, your car is going to take off, which is obviously not a good thing. So some guys will add like a momentary push button, which I I thought about. You can just press a button, but would be the equivalent of pressing the clutch, and that is a valid solution. I just don't really know where I would want to mount the switch to do it because I want to keep my car looking clean and. I just don't didn't really want the button. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to tap into the handbrake here. So anytime the handbrake is up, it will allow you to start the car. So you have some level of safety. I don't know if this would 100% keep the car from taking off, but you have it's not just going to be like there's nothing there at all if you for some reason left it in gear. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today. And I'm going to take you guys in the office and show you the circuitry that it's going to take to make this happen. Okay, so before we get started with all this, it's probably best to go over a brief explanation of how this works. So I've got the S2000 service manual here opened up, and what you can see here is the clutch interlock switch. And essentially it shows a light blue wire coming to the switch, which when the switch is closed, connects that to ground. So that's a relatively straightforward connection. This switch just connects the light blue wire to ground. Now, when you look at the parking brake circuit, you can see that it has a green and white wire and it also gets connected to ground when it's applied. So it's basically the same operation as the clutch switch. So you're probably wondering to yourself, why can't I just connect this to the, to the clutch interconnect switch and call it a day? And the answer is you could, but every time you would hit the clutch pedal, the car would think the parking brake was pressed and vice versa. That's obviously not ideal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a relay. And what that relay is going to do is it's going to separate the parking switch from the clutch interlock switch. So what the parking switch circuit will drive the relay. The relay will have a set of contacts in it that will control the parking switch. So these two will function independently of one another. Now how we're going to do that, I'm going to show you on my desk, on my hand-drawn schematic, how that's going to work. Okay, so as you can see, this is our circuit here. Basically you're going to take the parking brake switch, the wire that's going to that, and you're going to tee into that, and you're going to run that into the coil of the relay. That is going to be driving this relay on and off. The other section of this circuit is going to go to the clutch interlock switch, now when there is no power through the relay, the clutch interlock switch will be connected to ground, allowing you to start the car. When there is power through the relay, 
you will not be able to start the car because the clutch interlock switch will not be connected to ground. It's a little counterintuitive, but that's just the wiring of the car. So when the parking brake is applied, the relay will be off. When the parking brake is not applied, the relay will be on. Okay, so now that we've seen the circuitry and what we're going to do, it was time to select a relay. And I would not select a normal off-the-shelf relay that you would get from AutoZone for this, just because the coil current is going to be higher than I would prefer. Essentially, you don't want to draw more current on the circuit in the car than what it would normally draw. And I measured the current that it draws when the parking brake is up, and it draws around 83 milliamps on my car. So you want something that's going to draw less than 83 milliamps. That is where this relay comes in. This is an automotive relay. It draws about 53 milliamps on average. It depends on what the voltage it gets. But this is well below the 83 milliamps that we needed. This comes, this is meant to be soldered to a PCB, but I'm going to solder some wires onto it. I've got everything soldered and wired up per the schematic here. I've got the green wire going to one side of the coil. I've got ground going to the other side of the coil. I've got the white wire going to the normally closed contact and the common is also connected to ground but they're just looped together so i have to make one less connection in the car but yeah i'm gonna get some heat shrink on these and we'll go get it put in the car okay i've got all the heat shrink put on here everything's ready to go i'll probably cut off that tab the last contact that i'm not using once i make sure everything works but uh, at this point we're ready to go put this in the car all right so as you can see I have the center console taken off here and I'm going to go ahead and show you this is the brake interlock switch. As you can see it runs over here when you put when you put the emergency brake down it depresses that switch. When you pull it up the switch is not pressed. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tap into this green wire right here with my coincidentally green wire that goes to my coil and then I'm going to take this connection here and I'm gonna put it under that bolt right there and then I'm gonna have to run this white wire all the way to the clutch interlock switch and that's gonna be the fun part so as you can see I've got the this little quick connector cinched onto the green wire into the car and I've got the wire that I'm wanting to add to it pushed into the side over here now I have to hold it very carefully and crimp it down with some pliers. And there you go. I have one connection made. Flip this guy over. And that's ready to go. Alright, the next connection is going to be this ring terminal here. It's going to go underneath this bolt that connects the e-brake to ground. It's a 12 millimeter. Just loosen that up. Well, I had to convert my ring terminal into a spade terminal or fork terminal here, but that's fine. So I just cut it off so that it fits around the bolt and I'm going to put the bolt back in. So as you can see, I've got the ground wire connected down there on the ground and I've got the green wire connected to the 12 volts coming from the car I'm going to go ahead and power everything up make sure I can hear it clicking and then if everything works I'm going to run the white wire up to the clutch interlock switch so with the parking brake up right now I'm going to just simulate moving it so you can actually hear the relay switching it is working with the switch so I'm going to go ahead and run this up to the clutch interlock switch and uh, we'll be good to go so I've got the wire ran from here, up through here, up through the radio door, coming out the side over here. What I had to do is I took a coat hanger and I pushed it down through, there's a little hole right there where the wiring harness pops out. And the hanger popped out through there. I was able to kind of wrap the wire around the coat hanger and, and pull it back up through. That was a pain, but I think the most challenging part is coming up and that is connecting that wire 
to the clutch interconnect switch. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Now, you're gonna have a hard time seeing this because this thing is way up in there. There's a switch right here in front of me, which is the one you can see. There's a switch above that that has two wires going into it. It has a black wire and a light blue wire. That is your clutch interlock switch. So what you need to do is unplug that, trace that back and find a good spot to plug in to tap into the wire. So I'm gonna do that off camera because it's gonna be hard enough to do that way, let alone filming it. All right guys, well, I got it all wired up. It ended up being a pretty big pain in the ass, but what you can see here is I ended up having to use a red quick wire connect and I was able to find the wire that comes off of the clutch interlock switch and I was able to just tap into it a little bit down there because man that thing is up there it's going to be tough to get to if you try to get to the connector itself but that's where I was able to make the connection and it works now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean that up as nicely as I can, get everything buttoned up and put it back together. Got everything all buttoned back up. Everything's working like it should. So I'm going to show you guys, I mean, you should already get the idea, but I'll turn the key to the on position. I'm going to make sure the car is not in gear, obviously. And I'm going to put my foot on the brake, you know, just for safety, but with the e-brake down, and I press the start button, you get nothing, which is what you want. And with the e-brake up, my left foot is over here, right foot is on the brake. Car starts without the clutch pressed in. So yeah, this was, uh, this actually wasn't overly difficult. It was relatively straightforward. I'll say the hardest part was attaching the white wire to the light blue wire on the clutch interlock switch. But um, honestly, once I got the red quick connect fitting, it seemed to work just fine. Had I known that ahead of time, probably could have knocked 25, 30 minutes off of this job, but I wasn't really in a rush anyway. I kind of took a break and as you change because it was freaking 95 degrees in the garage today, but hey, it's all done now, everything looks good, and we are on to the next step. I did notice one thing about doing the bypass in this way, and that is if you take a look at the brake light over there, you can see when you turn it off, it is ever so slightly, I mean it is just barely illuminated, and that makes sense because there's about 53 milliamps flowing through it which isn't enough to actually power it on, but it does give it a slight glow. The car doesn't think the e-brake is turned on because I've tried to move the top that way. The top doesn't move. You know, if you actually put the e-brake on, the top will move. So yeah, it doesn't think the e-brake's on, but it does leave that light a little bit lit up. So just one thing to keep in mind with this method, if that bothers me in the future, I will find a different way to do this. But for now, that seems fine to me. You'll never even see it in the daylight, but I did want to just point that out. So. so yeah, this mod will help alleviate any additional wear to the thrust bearings inside the engine caused by the heavier clamping force of the clutch. In my case, I have the ACT heavy duty clutch with the OEM friction disc, which is what a lot of S2000 guys run. Honestly, I don't know if that's an issue or not. There's been a handful of complaints, but for as easy as it is to do, and as cheap as it is to do, I think by the time I paid shipping and everything for those relays, it was like 13 bucks or something. And it cost me a couple hours worth of time messing around with it. But honestly, I enjoy doing this kind of thing anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, got everything all done. I'm pretty happy with it. I think that's where I'm going to leave off for today. Until the next time, hang around because I've got some more videos coming up. More exciting videos that explains all of these mods of the, the clutch the clutch interlock bypass, the fire extinguisher in the back. Um, we're making some progress towards our end goal here, but you'll see eventually. But yeah, I think that's all I have for today. So uh, yeah, feel free to like and subscribe. But anyways, thanks for watching.